And really, it's understanding the situation, okay? A negative play on first down, the likelihood of it. Again, it's just me doing a better job of conveying to the guys and having them think football, and that's my responsibility. So, again, I, I failed them in regards to the understanding when and where they're going to come and the likelihood of them happening. For offensive and specifically linemen attacking your linebackers, Jay and Leighton Greenridge, any different from this season than they were last season? No. So in terms of productivity, do you feel like they've been as productive at this point than they were last year? Uh, I haven't looked at it statistically. So production-wise, I couldn't tell you that because obviously, again, production is typically measured by uh, statistical, right? Um, and I'm not looking at that. And I'm looking at on-field performance as a whole. It's either pass or fail. So at the end of the day, when you look up and you take a look at the scoreboard, it doesn't matter what the situation is, either pass or fail. Do we do our job or not? How about how you're grading your linebackers? How are, how are, how are Leighton and how are Jalen grading now? Yeah, they're playing well. Like I said, they're, they're out there. Everyone's working as a cohesive unit, and that's all we can ask for. <laughs> These tackles were an issue against the Vikings. In watching tape, were you able to identify where that issue stemmed from and what does the defense need to do to adjust? Yeah, we got to have our cleats in the grass. We have to do a better job of hitting bigger and uh, not committing too soon on the running back's legs. Um, again, when you're dealing with good backs in this league, sometimes you just have to take a charge. Uh, it's not always going to be a splash hit, and you're the one in favor of you, right? Again, sometimes you may get knocked back a little. We don't want that, but sometimes when you're dealing with a good back, it can happen. Jalen was saying that? yesterday that on, on that when you had 10 men on the field mm -hmm. on, the, on the cook uh, screen that he noticed it, but he didn't feel, while he could call a timeout, he felt that should come from the coaching staff, and if he saw 10 men on the field, he wouldn't call a timeout again. Right. What, what is your procedure, and what is your interaction with your captains as far as when to call a timeout? And, and should a timeout been called in that situation if a, if a player notices? No, well, he's exactly right. Like I said, the, uh, the timeouts are going to come from the sideline. Um, yeah, I love our guys are, are perceptive, and really by nature, we have well-rounded, well intelligent guys who are able to see a lot of things that are out there. But no, the, the sideline typically come from the sideline. Do you guys want ownership of the defense? Are the guys on the field on their own, what they're doing to some degree? Mm -hmm. So they've got to see something like that. And especially in the offense with no huddle, it's time to relay what's happening on the field mm -hmm. on the sideline. You get to the sideline at each point where you're standing. Why not give the power to them to say, you're not ready for this snap, let's call a timeout and get ready. Well, because they may have the, the picture here in front of you, but it's to complete peripheral. What they don't know is, is whether or not somebody is coming on or off, and timeouts are valuable. So we get into a situation to where a mistake is made and we take a timeout that we're gonna need later in the game, you know, that, that's gonna be our responsibility, not theirs. So what was the breakdown on that play? Just not uh, getting the, the signal quickly enough on the sidelines to it's call just a timeout? It's just in that transition. It's, it's you know, work, working from nickel to base. So if we think this or think that, no, it's like just stay on the field until you are brought off. You have to be tagged off the field in order to come off. Okay. It wasn't tagged, so that, he did nothing wrong there, right? Who? Uh, I have to go back and watch the play. I'm not sure. I was just going to say, with the, uh, looking at the lines, and uh, what do you see from Driscoll? And did you have to go back and look at him with the Bengals last year? No, haven't gone back to take a look at him last year. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're evaluating him by what he did last game, obviously, than what he's doing with Detroit. Again, he's a big physical guy. He has a powerful arm. Obviously, he has great speed. Uh, we can anticipate a little bit of the zone read, that element being added in on top of um, really, really good players. Uh, that, that they have at their skill position. So um, they're going to have speed at every level. Uh, again, a good route running tight end, uh, vertical threats uh, with 11, 19, and 17. And then obviously McKissick, you know, he, he's a hybrid type. So um, you, can, you can consider him a running back if you like, but you just have to be leery of your matchups when he's outside of the court. For all the negatives we just talked about on that 30 yard play, Marcus Lawrence was positive in terms of his effort yeah. to make that play downfield. Absolutely. What did you see from him on that? And what, what maybe more broadly, what does he bring as a backside defender? Yeah, that was you're exactly right. You hit the nail right on the head. You know, it's um, again, our defense is all predicated upon effort first and foremost. So he's really embodied that I, uh, that ideology, that, that philosophy. So for a guy to give that type of effort, and we know we're going to have a chance. What challenges does Galladay present? He's big, he's fast, again, a physical receiver. 
again, same idea of vertical threat, but not only on the fade ball. Um, again, you got to deal with him in the intermediate area also, again, back shoulder fades and things of that nature. So um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see with the, uh, the connection with um, the quarterback and him. Obviously, again, the majority of the reps that they have been taken have been with Stafford. So at the end of the day, whichever quarterback they put out there, you know, the likelihood is they're certainly going to try to target him isolated, again, single receiver side as an X. How did Cheeto perform for you this last game, and how's he played overall this season? Well, I think that's a really good question. Um, first and foremost, it's my responsibility to make sure that our guys are getting the job done consistently. So if I feel as though a guy isn't doing particularly well, it's because I'm failing him. You know, it's it, in, in Cheeto's case, it, 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 it seems as though it's not good because of magnified situations, and that's inaccurate. Mm -hmm. It's inaccurate. You know, he's done a really good job for us out there. And again, it's the reason why he's out there and he's starting for us. It's because we know what we can count on from him. All right, again, he's going to be tough. He's going to be fast. He's going to be physical. Again, he's going to battle this tail off. You know, it just so happens in some critical areas and situations, we haven't gotten it done. Mm -hmm. You know, so those situations and those plays get magnified and then you go, okay, well now I can look at you and point here and point there. And it's like, no, it's not. You know, I said every play is a critical play. You know, it's just sometimes in the game, things are magnified, more in particular on third down. You know, I mean, we talked about Jalen right in the start when I asked you about him, but those two guys are high profile guys who made a lot of plays last year. Mm -hmm. I was watching this year, they don't seem to be doing quite as well as they did a year ago. Is that right or wrong? Uh, wrong. We can sit down and watch it together and then you can just point out to me and show me where. I'm just not seeing plays. Interceptions, fumbles, things like that. Um, fumble recoveries and interceptions, they don't have one this year. Mm -hmm. Should those, given the nature of that position, should they have, I mean, should those kinds of plays come from that position or given the fact that they're in the middle, maybe you're not going to see as many of those? Well, they should come from every position. Like, that's what defense is about. Like, everything that we call is designed to take the football away. So whether it's fumbles, interceptions, or anything of that nature. So you feel pretty good that they've played at a high level pretty consistently throughout the year, yes? I feel really good about our defense, yes. Thanks, All right, absolutely. Obviously, he's not practicing this week, but what does going up against Amari do for your defense? Uh, going up against Amari? Going up against Amari, facing someone of his abilities week in, week out, what does that do for your defense just to kind of face a guy of his caliber? Oh, talking about an elite receiver? Yes. Yeah, it's like there's, there's a much that you're not going to be able to see on game day that you haven't already seen in practice. So uh, there's a level of uh, poise and discipline that comes along with uh, – guarding a receiver of his nature. So we should be able to carry that over into the game. He's so <coughs> even keel. Like he makes these sideline really impressive receptions and afterward he has nothing in terms of celebration. He just gives the ball to the ref. He gets the same way in practice. Like his <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Cool, calm, collective, um, focus. Because you guys are five and four. I know, expect, I know a lot of people expected this team to be a little bit better than five and four. Mm -hmm. This group you know, not at all pressure. We're not delivering that message. So well, you may not be delivering it, but outside people do. I mean, he does. Yeah, friends. exactly right. And that's the message that doesn't count. The message that counts is ours. Is there's only one opinion that's going to matter, and it's ours. It comes within these walls in this building. The second that we start allowing outside voices to matter, it's a distraction. And that's one of the top things that we preach. All right, and it comes with the discipline is that we eliminate distraction. So outside voices don't matter. You think they're pretty good about that, about eliminating it and that just noise? Just I do. Darian was called upon on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Jeff's medical situation has been down here for a while. Mm -hmm. What's your comfort in him? And if that is a situation that occurs again where he's got to step in and be your starting safety? Yeah, very comfortable. I said very comfortable. Again, he's a guy that, uh, that we trust to put out there. Uh, again, really smart, physical, uh, reliable.